The forced expiratory volume test is a method that is used to assess or to test for or, or identify difficulties with exhalation, so obstructive lung disorders. So it can be used to diagnose obstructive lung disorders. Every now and then you, you'll also see some uh, residual, I'm sorry, restrictive lung disorders that might show up on this exam, but they're really not designed for detection of those types of disorders. The forced expiratory volume test is something that we actually do in lab. Um, and so I wanna walk you through the process as if you would be doing this in lab. You would do a typical normal uh, spirometry and so you would first begin this test by breathing normally for perhaps a minute or for five complete breaths um, and just through normal quiet breathing. You would then take a maximal inhalation. So breathing in as much as you possibly can, um, as fast as you possibly can. So this inhalation here. Um, once you've inhaled to your maximum capacity, you then exhale as quickly and as hard as you can, contracting those abdominal muscles until you cannot expel any additional air. This method, and then you return to normal quiet breathing. This method, uh, then we to analyze this, you essentially zoom in to this process and you'll notice that from top to bottom here, you know, from here to here, that's my vital capacity right there. And that's going to be important. So that's one of the things that you would measure is your vital capacity. And we would actually call this the F VC for forced vital capacity. Um, that's essentially what that stands for, but that's my vital capacity. And you would measure that by some computer analysis. You would essentially just measure the difference here and we can actually look, let me see this if we can get it to shrink down. If we look at this, let's look at that and follow this over. So if we follow this over to my top line here and we're gonna go ahead and say that that volume Notice this time I have it in liters as opposed to milliliters, but that volume would be, let's pick, let's go ahead and say it's gonna be uh, 5.2 liters is my maximum. And then again, follow the bottom line down here. And so maybe this is, what would that be? Maybe one point, oh, we'll say four. Okay, and so the difference between this, to calculate my vital capacity, forced vital capacity, would simply be 5.2, which is my maximum, minus that 1.4, and so my vital capacity then is the difference between those two numbers, okay. The um, forced vital capacity is going to be used in your calculations, but let's zero in on what forced expiratory volume is. Okay. The expiratory volume, all right, is essentially how much air you can exhale, how much volume you can exhale in a period of one second. So if we follow this dotted line down to my x-axis, and we put a line that runs from the peak. Okay, let's do, can I, we'll try this. Um, from the peak to the x-axis, okay. You're gonna see that that's approximately, see five, six, seven seconds. So that would be seven seconds on my timeline but I'm actually going to reset the scale and say seven seconds equals my brand new zero. The next line I will place at exactly one second away from the peak. Okay. And the trick here is to line up the first, the zero mark at 
the point on the peak where uh, the volume starts to decrease. Okay. Between this value, between the zero and the one second, is your volume, this area right here. And so you follow that over and you can see that we'd still be at the 5.2 for my maximum volume. And this one would be about right there, whatever that volume there would be. So let's just go ahead and say it's a 4.05 or something like that. We'll just use 4 for the nice round number. So my expiratory volume in this particular time, we're actually just going to use 0 to make the math nice and easy. My expiratory volume, forced expiratory volume at 1 second is equal to um, 0.8 liters. Now let's look at my vital capacity. So my vital capacity is going to be equal to um, my 5.2 okay, minus 1.4. So that should be my three, let's do it in black, uh, 3.8 liters. Now what you do with these two values is a little bit of math. You're going to take your forced expiratory volume at one second. So I'll put it up here. My forced expiratory volume at one second would be 0.8 liters, 0 0.8 liters. And I'm going to divide that to get a ratio by my forced expiratory of vital capacity. And then of course you multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. So 0.8 divided by 3.8 equals times 100, 21 percent. So my forced expiratory volume in this made-up experiment or this made-up example is 21 percent. Okay, knowing that value then you're going to take that value and compare it to what is normal. And remember that normal would be an average value for a large sample of people. So people without any respiratory disorders that do this exam. And normal happens to be, if we look at this, normal happens to be about 80%. Okay, so in the should probably state that I made this figure using PowerPoint and obviously my PowerPoint creation techniques are, well, this poor person would definitely be suffering from an obstructive lung disorder and the reason I know that is because 80% is normal and based on this calculation I have 21%. Okay, now you can further measure the forced expiratory volume at two seconds after the peak, and that would be my FEV2. And you can measure it by three seconds after the peak, and that would be my FEV3. And these values further tell you a little bit about lung function. By the time you reach your FEV3, you really should have, have exhaled close to 100% of your vital capacity, somewhere in the range of 90 to 100% um, there. If we look at, so this, this is essentially how you would do it in the lab. With this type of graph, you would, you would place your cursor at certain areas on the graph to measure this force expiratory volume. Now, if you're actually going to do this as a respiratory therapy or so, oh, so forth, the graph material would be presented differently. Essentially, you would take the same information Okay, this, this line right here, and use it to create a little bit easier to read graph that looks like this. This line here corresponds to that ex forced expiratory volume. And so here you can see your tidal breathing right here, your maximal inspiration right here, the peak is flattened just to make this curve look easier. It would really look kind of more like something like this. 
and you try to get um, this line right here at where we start to see a decrease in volume. Okay. In a normal healthy individual, in this example, this is a much better looking figure and, and more, uh, well, not handicapped by my PowerPoint skills. This red line, if we were to measure my forced expiratory volume on the red line that I have now colored in green, 1.8 liters compared to my calculated vital capacity of difference between here and here, okay, uh, which according to this is about four liters, what I end up with is a functional or a forced expiratory volume to vital capacity ratio of about 80%. And that falls within my normal range. Compare that to this blue line. Okay, This individual with the blue line is at 62.5%. And so this individual, individual B, whoever he or she is, would be diagnosed with an obstructive lung disorder. There would be additional tests that would need to follow, but in essence, that's it. Okay, this poor person, well, for, fortunately it's made, made up because <laughs> you'd probably be seriously in trouble if your vital capacity was only I mean, uh, your FEV1 was only 21%. Uh, that would be like really, really bad news.